Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome back to the second video in our tutorial on Twitch Plays Pokemon using Python 3.6. <clears throat> so last video, we basically showed how to use the sockets in order to connect to the Twitch channel, and then we went through the loading process and we told it how to exit the loading loop. I'm going to correct just one thing right here. Um, I'm going to add in one little selection and basically what this is doing is this is choosing the entire read buffer minus the last bit so it's stopping one before the last end because um, there's actually an empty um, line in there. And if that empty line is there, then it doesn't successfully leave the loop. So I'll show I'll show that right now. If we do it like we had it before, then I do Control B, and it gets to there, and it prints this statement, but it does not exit the loop. It continues running. So if I do like that, and then I do control B again you can see that it finished it exited the loop and it finished the program that was just I forgot to type that last time so anyway moving on so now that we have that established what we're gonna figure out how to do is how to actually send a message because that's pretty important we're gonna define some function send message we're gonna pass in the IRC and we're going to have another argument be the message. And we're going to have a temporary message variable. And this is basically the format something has to be in order for Twitch to respond to the message. So this isn't anything Python specific. This is specific to just what Twitch does. So so basically what we're doing here is we're going to have some temporary message that's just stored and it's going to be equal to priv message space pound sign and then it's going to tell which channel it needs to go to and then you need to make sure you have a space there colon and then we attach our message to the end and then that's what gets passed through so then we can do irc dot send just like we did before when we sent our login information, we did an IRC send, and we <coughs> were sending information again, and this time it's a message. So we're passing in that message we created, and we're going to throw in a new line, and then we're going to encode it, because if we remember from last time... <coughs> It's expecting a bytes-like object and not a string, so we need to remember to do that. I am missing a parentheses. There we go. And so basically, that's how we send a message. It's that simple. So now, instead of just printing out in the console, let's call our function, and we can do something like this. And we can say... Um, we pass in IRC and then we can say chat room joined and then let me take this to one side where is it there and so now when we run it let's see what happens we can see that it commented and it says chat room joined so we successfully connected to the comment section of twitch now, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so it continuously reads. So this section was just to join. That got us in and it made, us, made sure that we had entered the channel correctly and that um, we could move on to actually reading. But now we can move on to the actual reading part. And so we're going to do a while true loop. Actually, I'm going to put this at the bottom. So this is going to be very similar to this thing, except for we're not going to give it an exit route. So what we're going to do is we're going to try 
make a read buffer. And so if you look at this, this is almost exactly the same as the top one. And we're going to do the same thing where we decode. Actually, let's try and do this all as one step. Let's. We'll see how that turns out. Hopefully, it's fine. And so, what this is doing is it's going to try to pull the read buffer. If something goes wrong, then it's going to go to this accept and it's just going to leave it as a blank string so that we can continue moving along and it doesn't just catastrophically fail. It doesn't end up with a string that equals none or something like that. That's going to just break it down the line. And so this is, like I said, it's pretty much all the same as the previous one. In this one, you'll notice that I actually added the return carriage sign on top of the new line. This is just for formatting. I'll, I'll show it both ways just so you can get an understanding of what's actually going on. And so basically what I'm doing on this next line is if the line equals blank line like we would set it in there when there's an error in the read buffer then we're going to just make it pass and not do anything so it can move or rather continue so it goes to the next item in the for loop so that we can keep going and keep trying to read the messages and doesn't just break and so that should be it for that so we can show I'm gonna run this something's wrong let me double check for line in read buffer oh equals equals okay so we see that it didn't exit it didn't say completed in whatever amount of time so then let's go back over to our Twitch chat. It successfully sent our message. That's a good sign. And then let's just type in hello. And we can see down here it printed hello and it has all of this other garbage. And so you probably don't want the rest of that garbage there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of cleaning up and we're going to use we're going to make new functions and we can see down here one of these seems to be the user this is probably that's the channel one of these is the user it's kind of difficult to tell because I'm commenting on my own channel but then we know this is the message so we need to find some way to separate out the message and the user and so our first function we're gonna focus on is get user and it's going to have the line passed into it and it's going to be basically we're just going to take a consistent split and slice of it <clears throat> and so basically what we're doing is we're using the split function and we're splitting on the colons and we're splitting it two times up to two times so basically it's gonna split here and it's gonna split here and then next what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the user equal And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to do the first or the the second technically because it's zero index. So we're going to take the second split in the separate object we just made and we're going to split it again on the exclamation mark. We're only going to split it one time and we are going to take the first value. So we're going to take 
this right before the exclamation mark, if that makes any sense. And then what we are going to do is we will return the user because that is going to be... Sorry about that guys, I had to deal with something. So basically what we've got here is we've got the user and we've separated it out and like I said we split it on the exclamation mark <coughs> And then we grab the first part of that um, chunk. So then it's going to be just this. And so I can show that off. I can print it. And then we're also going to return it so that we can use it. And what I'm going to do here is call the function in our little loop and then <coughs> pass in line. So like if I do control B, then if I, we see that once again, it, it passed through the comment, it sent it. And so we can just type in hi, and then it, second off, it reads this. But before that, you can see that it actually peeled off the username, and so it knows who sent that message. So that's pretty useful. I'm going to remove this print statement for now because we don't need it anymore. And so after that, we're going to have to do a separate split that gets the message. And in that, we're going to pass in the line again. And we are going to do a try accept. And we're going to define what the message is. And it's going to be similar to the last one where we do a split on the line. And this one we're splitting on the colon. Need some quotes around that. And we're going to split it into two parts, potentially. And we're going to take the second chunk of that. So, hang on. Um looking at this so we see that we're splitting on one colon two colons and then we're gonna grab what is essentially before this would be a zero one two so we can see that we're grabbing this portion and then we're going to do the second half of the try except and what we're going to do is we're going to just leave it empty because sometimes we might run into a problematic message or something that is sent to us that we don't really have a use for and we're just going to leave it as empty so we're going to do return message and then what we can do here is we can call both of these functions. Get message, pass in the line. And then we can print user. or something like that if we want to. So I can type in hi. I screwed up something. Name user is not defined. Sorry, I looked back at this and I realized it's something super obvious. I need to be defining these down here so I can just do message equals that user equals that and then now I can print something like user plus colon plus message and let's put some spaces in there then I can run that <coughs> type in hi again and then we get IT connected is the user and then hi is the message and then we're good to go. And then the next thing we're gonna do is define another function 
This one's a little bit more abstract. This one is going to determine if this is a message from a user or directly from Twitch, like it's some server related thing. And basically, whoops. Basically, you can see that um, that priv message thing, that's something similar to, let's see, let me print the line again. So I can show you guys. So you can see this priv message thing. That's basically the way that you know that something came directly from a user and not from the server. So if priv message in line, we're going to return false because it didn't come directly from the server. And if that's not in there, then we know that it is directly from the server and not a user message. So we're going to have to look at that and deal with that differently and the reason we're doing this is actually because <coughs> we need to handle that in a different way because um, there's actually in order to stay online in order to stay connected what twitch is going to do is they're going to continuously ping you every once in a while to make sure you're still active and you aren't just continuously connected and not doing anything and so what we're going to do is they're going to ping us P-I-N-G capitals in the line and console with the line pass through if that returns true then what we have to do is we have to respond with a message that says all of this garbage and so we have to return the message to twitch.tv with a carriage return new line and then we have to encode it and so basically that's the message we have to return in order for Twitch to allow us to stay connected. And so what we're going to do is like we did before, we're going to send the message. We're going to print it just for good measure. And then we're just going to continue through this for loop. I am going to put this above the else because I feel like that's mm, I'm not sure I guess I'll keep it there for now let's see how it reacts but other than that that's basically everything that we need to do as far as sending, receiving messages, staying live on the channel. All of that is pretty much done. So we can read it. We have isolated text, the, the chat input and the users. So all we really need to do now is turn that input into um, something that we can pass through to the emulator that we're running. So we just need to turn chat over here into A, B, up, down, left, right for the Game Boy, and then we're pretty much set.